What's up guys and welcome to the long overdue suspension video. What you're about to watch was filmed in small chunks over the past few months, starting with when I towed the Ranger to Malaga suspensions for the initial install somewhere back in April, and then how it's been performing both on and off road in the months since. So with that in mind, this might not be the most structured video you've ever watched, but hopefully it answers any questions you have about those Dobinson Springs and the Coney shocks. So sit back, enjoy. I'm gonna hang around here and enjoy this lovely afternoon and I'll catch you guys at the end of the video. Good morning guys. Today is a very special day. Today the Ranger finally gets its brand new suspension system installed. Now I had big plans for this video. I was gonna take a bunch of before footage to do a full comparison with the new suspension kit. But as some of you may know from my previous video, the Ranger broke down on me last week and has been in the mechanics ever since. So I wasn't able to take the before footage I was hoping to get. It's actually still at the mechanics right now, but luckily for me, Bianca's letting me borrow her, her little baby, her little WRX. So I'm gonna head over to the mechanics now, chuck the Ranger on a tow truck, get it towed to the suspension shop to get that installed, and then towed back to the mechanics afterwards. Definitely not how I had this day planned. So for those of you who haven't seen the unexpectedly pleasant mini-series where we chatted suspension, I'm basically getting a full Dobinson suspension kit installed on the Ranger, and I'm upgrading the included shocks to Kony. The main reason I've chosen to upgrade those shocks to Kony's is because they're hydraulic instead of gas, and that should make for a little bit more of a comfortable ride. And those of you with IFS utes will know that we'll take all the additional comfort that we can get. Aside from the comfort, the new kit's gonna be the correct spec to withstand that 500 kilogram canopy, because the stock suspension is just not dealing well with the extra weight at all. So uh, the rear leaf springs, when I drop the canopy on, they go completely horizontal, almost inverted, and the whole kit does basically nothing in terms of uh, making the ride more comfortable. That's not its fault at all. It's, uh, it's a pretty old kit now, and it certainly wasn't designed to withstand all that extra weight. I'm experiencing some uh, mixed emotions right now. On one hand, it's kind of sad to see your car on the back of a back of a tow truck like this. On the other hand, I'm super excited about this suspension. Been uh, hanging out for it for a few months now. Can't wait to see what it looks like afterwards and uh, feel what it drives like. So yeah, a few mixed emotions there. Bianca's Rex is also very nice to drive. So thanks again, Bianca, for letting me borrow it. I'm taking very good care of it. Just got a call from the shop to say they're running a little bit behind schedule and the car's not gonna be ready to pick up today anymore as originally planned. At this stage, they reckon early tomorrow morning, so I've booked a tow truck for 11 a.m. to pick up the car from the suspension shop, take it back to the mechanic to get those injector seals replaced. What's up guys? As you can see, a little bit of time has passed since I've had the suspension kit installed. It's given me a couple of months to really familiarize myself with the system, put it through its paces and see what it's made of. And today, I've brought it down to a beach I never thought I was ever gonna come back to, White Hills Beach down near Mandra. It's uh, pretty renowned for being one of the more rutted out, bumpy, uncomfortable beaches. But I thought where better to test out the new suspension. So we're gonna be conducting a couple of tests, finding some uh, some various different obstacles and bits and pieces to really test it out. First test is something we all experience on popular beaches, and that's rutted out areas just like this. 
So this is a, a small sand dune section just off the beach and you can see people have had an absolute field day making tracks left, right and centre. So I'm going to hit a few of these ruts as uh, violently as possible and see how the suspension behaves. There we go, Let's test it across these bumps. Hold on. <laughs> there we go. Oh, not bad though, not bad at all. I'm trying to like, I'm remembering back to before, though like bumps like that would just be like shine, I don't shine know. splattering, shine. spine <laughs> shattering. That's fantastic, yeah. I wouldn't have even driven across something like that before. I could have a glass of water. <laughs> How many times did you drink that? <laughs> just Only once. once. Hey. Only once that time. That's all the review you need for suspension. Hey. Very good. Oh my god. Oh, that was good, Bumpy. It's but bumpy, not. But... It's like you expect it to jar you, but it doesn't because it's quite a big bump, but then it softens, yeah, which guess... is what it never used to do. Absolutely. I guess like suspension can't control, like if the track goes bounce. down, you're going to go down. It can just make that more comfortable. Than... But yeah, it's when it lands, so instead of being like a, a smack on a hard ground, yeah. it's. Um, it, it reduces, it, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's never going to be as comfortable as like a coil suspension like the old patrol used to be. No. But for what it is and for what it is now compared to what it was before, it no longer night and day jars difference. my spine and, and makes my teeth chomp together. Yeah. Which is what it used to do. Okay, we're just cruising down one of the worst stretches of beach I've ever driven on. What better place to test what it's like over those typical sandy beach bumps? It's actually so much better. This is a lot better than before, this definitely. This used to like jar my back um, and I'd be like bracing. I mean, my voice is still really wavery because it's still bouncy, but it's it's like a mild vibration instead of massive like yeah. jarring jumps. It's just ironing them out. Like, well, it's, yeah. it's doing a really good job. Very good, yeah. Before I'd be like almost sitting in first gear, just just to go slow enough that they weren't so jarring. Yeah. It's still it's still bumpy. Don't get us wrong, but compared to what it was, it's much smoother. Significantly so better. That's why I don't brace myself. Normally, I would have to brace so that I don't get thrown all over the car, go sideways and up and down. But at the moment, so far it's all right. We'll see how we go over some bigger bumps. Now we just got a really soft bit. I can find some bigger bumps. <laughs> yep. Yeah, see, stuff like that used to throw me, and that's just so smooth now. And I feel more confident putting on an angle. I was about to say, yeah, it's it feels more stable. It doesn't feel so, like, top-heavy in a way. Obviously, it's still going to be a little bit top-heavy, but it feels like yeah. it articulates the a lot better. The actually doing its job to try and keep us as level as it can. Yeah, it's not, like, stiff and just like a plank of wood. It's now, yeah. like, no, I will stay on the ground. A bit more dynamic. Okay, for the next test, we've come down to the Bridgetown bush and you'll just have to excuse my voice because I'm just recovering from a bit of a cold. Anyway, we've come down here to try and simulate a scenario that I'm sure most four-wheel drivers will be familiar with, especially those of you who have IFS utes like mine, and that's lifting opposing wheels at the same time. So we've come down to a track that has a bit of a lump halfway up. I'm gonna try and hit that lump sideways to lift my front right and my back left wheel at the same time. It's the exact situation where my factory suspension would have struggled a lot. I would have been stuck there with those two wheels spinning. So it'll be interesting to see how much of a difference this new suspension kit has made. Sorry to interrupt guys, I've just been editing through this footage and I don't really think the camera captured that bump in the track very well at all. And it doesn't really look like there was any real risk of those opposing wheels lifting and uh, giving me any trouble on the track. So to prove that that was a sizable bump, here's what happened when I hit the exact same line but at a ridiculously slow speed.
As you can see, when we go that slow, like pretty much walking pace, those two opposing wheels do break free and start to spin. But at least that new suspension kit is now allowing those wheels to flex down and mostly stay in contact with the track the whole time. Which is why when we speed up just a little bit, we're able to get through that section with ease. Anyway, just thought that was worth pointing out. I better jump back into this editing and I'll let you get back to the video. Woohoo, that new suspension kit made it look easy. I know for a fact the factory suspension would have got hung up in that exact situation for sure. So to be able to just uh, crawl over those areas with ease, very happy and that's a massive uh, flex improvement over the factory suspension. Now, I know the range is a 4 but as with most four-wheel drives, except maybe comp trucks, it spends most of its life on the bitumen. Whether that's heading away to a camping destination or just back and forth to work during the week. So, we're just going to do a quick on-road test to see what's what. And before we do, it's important that you know just how bad the, uh, the Ranger was on his factory suspension. Bianca will attest to this, but on the factory Bad. suspension, it was, uh, if you're familiar with boats, it was similar to steering a small ship. I and mean, exactly, we'd go around corners in the SS Exploranger, turn the corner, and then the kind of the body of the car would sort of roll the opposite way. So like sometimes you get that back wheel off the ground, don't you know? Yeah, exactly, you're doing some, uh, doing some suburban parkour in the Ranger. <laughs> so yeah, we're just gonna do a quick test to see if there's been any improvements. All right, I'm going to head round a standard roundabout, see what the difference is. I guess I should go relatively quickly. There we go. Oh, that's staying remarkably level. Let's keep going around. It's like you still get a little bit of body roll, as you always will, but that is, uh, that's staying much flatter than it used to be, for definitely, sure. Definitely. Yeah, happy with that. So we found ourselves a nice empty strip of road, so we're safely going to do a bit of, uh, bit of swerve testing, oh the exact type of thing that would get a lot of body roll normally. That's not bad. You're always going to get a little bit of body roll in four-wheel drive, like more than your typical sedan but that is significantly better than what it was before. Very good, very yeah. little body roll. And once you stop, it seems to reset itself really yeah, quickly. definitely. Hold on, Bianca, we're going around here quickly. Sorry. <laughs> oh, we got wheel spin. But that was still not There was a bit of, bit of roll, hey, but to nothing it. too bad, really. Uh, another perfect road test is some typical speed bumps, which you can't see, but we can, and we're about to go over Here's one, some so. I prepared earlier. <laughs> Let's just hit him in third gear. Just, all right. Ooh. Well, there's everything in the canopy <laughs> belt, but we didn't. <laughs> that wasn't too bad, really. It was like, no. I was expecting it to be a fair bit worse I was expecting that. that to really, like, bang down, but it didn't. It grabbed it. Yeah. But, yeah. Wow. So in terms of general on-road performance, it feels like it's handling the, the little bumps in the track pretty well. Yeah, it's just like a normal car. It's not too. Yeah, yeah. I don't. It's not much else to say on that. It's, it's not. Cool. It's not completely ironing out every bump. You can still feel them, but yeah, yeah, not too bad. Pretty happy with that. Yeah, definitely more comfortable than it used to be. Because I remember specifically, like I used to always feel every bump in this car on the road. Whereas now, it's definitely ironing them out a bit. Well, to conclude, I am pretty satisfied with that uh, that upgrade in the suspension. Definitely uh, ticking all the boxes for me. What do you reckon? Yeah, definitely. It's so much more comfortable than the original, um, both on-road and off-road, especially mm. off-road, so... Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, I guess on-road, it's at the end of the day, it's still a four-wheel drive, so it's never going to be as stable around the corners as a sedan, but it handles the bumps a hell of a lot better, so I'm pretty pleased with that upgrade. Now, a couple of things I was concerned about prior to getting the suspension. The first was, is it still gonna fit in the garage with that new lift kit installed? And I'm happy to report, yes, it still fits in the garage. It was really nerve wracking backing it under for the first time. So I had Bianca out watching that top level to make sure it still fits in. 
and it probably clears the garage door by less than an inch. But the second thing I was concerned about is if it still fits in the garage, which it does, am I still gonna be able to lift it off the back of the car and get the ute free? Well, that's what we're about to find out. That gives you a pretty good idea of the lift because those legs were probably a couple of millimetres off the floor with the car at its original height. I think we're clear. That wasn't much at all. There's plenty of room at the top, so I was fretting over nothing. <laughs> I will just have to wind it a little bit further for the car to actually get out without scraping along the bottom too badly, but should maybe be an extra three fingers or so, which there's plenty of clearance. So we're all good. Job done, the canopy's free, came off without too many issues. Check out the clearance I've got over this back wheel now. That's pretty awesome. Could chuck some 35 inch muddies on there and do some sick off-roading. Well, I'm gonna be quite interested to feel what the ride is like now that the canopy's off, because these springs are rated to withstand the weight of that canopy. So now that there's no weight on the back end, I imagine it's gonna make for a pretty bumpy ride. Woohoo, you've made it to the end of the video. Now, some of you might be wondering why I didn't hit some gnarly four wheel driving tracks or climb the Ranger over some massive rocks to test the suspension out. And the truth is, there's not much point really. The Ranger has an IFS front end, which is torsion bar suspension and a leaf sprung rear. And what that means is that even with the best suspension in the world, it will never come close to competing with a coil sprung four wheel drive. So for me, the improvements I was hoping for was some extra comfort over rough beaches, some extra ground clearance, added stability on road and sufficient support for the weight of that canopy. And I'm happy to report that all of those boxes have been ticked. So, would I recommend this system based off what I've experienced over the past two or three months? Absolutely, but I'd also say to have realistic expectations. I know I've said it a million times already, I'm probably sounding like a bit of a broken record, but at the end of the day, it's still got a torsion bar front end and a leaf spring rear end. So it's never gonna iron out those bumps completely or flex as well as your mates patrol. However, it is a hell of a lot better than it was before in all the ways we covered in the video, and in my opinion, was well worth the money. Which, in case you're wondering, was about $3,000 drive in, drive out. Or in my case, I suppose that's more like tow in, tow out. Whew, well, I think that pretty much covers everything. Hopefully that video's uh, answered any questions you guys might have had about that new suspension system. But if not, and as always, feel free to chuck them in the comments down below, and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. Until next time, thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.